morning. My name is Elaine Brennerhoff, and together with Ben Rottenborn, we represent Amber Laura Hurd. Will you please state your name and address? Sure, it's Adam Robert Waldman. And what is your current occupation? Adam Robert. Attorney. Uh, I'm also involved with a skincare company in a variety of capacities. How long have you been an attorney? Uh, I think since 1995. No, not Waldman. Amber Heard hates Waldman. They, they hate Do each you other. currently represent John C. Depp II, who I will be referring to in this deposition as Mr. Depp or Depp? Oh, wait. <laughs> they got Adam Waldman as a... Wait, who? They got Adam Waldman? Is it Waldman or someone else? Because Adam Waldman has beef with Amber Heard. And he was the one that was, he was representing Johnny. But then uh, he leaked some stuff in the court and the judge kicked him out of the courtroom. That's Adam Waldman? Oh, shit. I do. And is this representation an attorney-client representation? It is. Does it include any other type of He's banned on Twitter. Mr. Depp, other than as an attorney-client? Uh, we, we should go through his uh, tweets, though. Dude, they are fucking sick. Scathing, scathing. I actually want to go through it and see which ones are true and if he like was like a little bit fudgy fudgy, you know? All right, Adam Waldman, March of 2021. Oh, that was last year. Oh, damn, it wasn't that long ago. Adam Waldman, allegation, broken ribs, broken nose, two black eyes, busted lip, defensive bruises on forearm and all over the body, UK justice system. You know what really could have helped you sort through all these important issues? Orange mocha frappuccino, Zolander. Yeah, because Amber Heard did a uh, a photo shoot. I think I think this was like ten days after. Uh, it's a photo shoot ten days after. I mean, it doesn't really look like she's really wearing makeup. I would say like, let's say if she had bruises, maybe they photoshopped it out. But I think her makeup artist like posted um, the photo shoot, which is like, oh, hashtag no makeup needed or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, here's this. All right. Got to photograph pictures of dot, dot, dot. Deaf leopard photograph. Hashtag no evidence is enough. Oh, this is the, yeah. They didn't realize this picture existed. This is where Amber said she had a split lip. Um, oh, Amber should do brunette. Brunette looks good on her. Um, Amber had like a split lip or something from Johnny slapping her so hard, I think, that blood splattered on the wall. Hi, aesthetic. Oh, yeah. I don't know who's going to go next. Um. It's going to be a live witness. I haven't have to update that when we find out. Oh, and this one was kind of interesting. March 23, 2013. Ms. Heard claimed Depp smashed her, face in the, smashed her in the face with ringed fingers, splattering blood on a smeg fridge that wasn't purchased until 2014. Confronted with this photo taken the following day. Heard and sister testified you can see the facial damage. Um, I think, oh, here's Amazon purchase. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I remember seeing this. She said there's blood on the Smeg fridge. And I was like, Smeg fridge? Is that like the old school fridges? Yeah, ordered on October 9, 2014. <laughs> oh, man. May 26, 2016. Two domestic abuse train officers who arrived on the scene. I think only one of them was um, domestic abuse train. I think. Not sure. Um, saw no damage to either Ms. Hurt's face or the penthouse. Ms. Hurt and friends claim were utterly destroyed by Mr. Depp. Wear the same thing every day. So this is Amber. Amber's face, the reminder. And the police officers. More photo shoot. Bruise ribbed, bruises all over my body, bruises on my forearm from trying to defend the blows. I had two black eyes, had a broken nose, had a broken lip, but witnesses. A photo shoot, James Corden show the next night in HD. Ms. Heard, makeup. <laughs> oh, Amber. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> Whoa, Bruce ribs. Oh, God. Some close ups here. <laughs> oh. Okay. <clears throat> 816. Ms. Heard falsely claimed seven million divorce uh, money donated to ACLU Children's Hospital. Six seventeen. Heard pretends Elon Musk's anonymous gift is actually hers. <laughs> Twelve eighteen. ACLU realized re what the money donation was able to do to help protect women. Nine nineteen. ACLU bizarrely tries to enter the case today. ACLU fights disclosure. Yeah, they they did not want to be on the trial. Um, let's see. Broken ribs and face. Her stylist sees no injury uh, on the court and show. 
Her nurse cannot visualize injuries. Yep. Nurse Erin came two days afterwards. Then photo shoot, because inside out is wiggada, 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 whack. The Mac dad will make you jump, jump. The daddy Mac will make you jump, jump. <laughs> oh, is it the jump, jump? Is it that song? <laughs> I'm sorry, is this old people reference? Or should I know this? I'm, I'm a 90s. Yeah, has Amber heard more photo shoots? Uh, I don't understand why she would make such bizarre claims when she, one, she knows she's a celebrity. Two, like, come on, she's dating Johnny Depp. Of course, there's gonna be paparazzi taking pictures and you're doing photo shoots, you're doing TV appearances. Like, good Lord. Oh, crisscross, jump, jump. Okay, okay, I know that song. There's another photo shoot as well. Um. Something about text message to sister. Oh, this is the one that I thought was interesting. This is the text message that her sister sent to John uh, to Johnny. So Johnny writes. Um, oh no, she, sister writes trying to call her. Johnny writes she just hit me, so she's all right. Her sister writes like physically hit you. That doesn't surprise me at all. Dot dot dot. Johnny writes no fuckhead as in contacted. You funny. And then she's like, oh, I'm a riot. That was interesting. Uh, more photo shoots as well, I guess. I think this is the, damn, she took a lot of photos, fuck. This is a photo shoot of her on the island. What? <laughs> did she forget that she did a photo shoot? Oh, this is the one where the makeup artist said that, uh, hashtag no makeup. So this is Amber Heard. This is Amber Heard. Oh, this is Amber Heard writing the thing. Okay, so he tweeted this with Amber Heard. Amber Heard writes, yes, Mr. Waldman, I may be wearing makeup on this occasion, but on every occasion, you will still be short. <laughs> wow, that was so great, Amber. So funny. Uh, this is, Elle, This is. Um, I think she did Amber Heard's makeup during the photo shoot. With a very beautiful mermaid, dot, dot, fresh from the swim in the sea. Hashtag Amber Heard on the beach, December 2015, in our dress, shot by Viking. Hashtag blah, blah, blah. Hashtag blah, blah, blah. No makeup or hair or styling needed. <laughs> oh, God. Things are not looking good for Amber. I mean, I'm sure for the photo shoot, they always do like a little bit, you know? I'm, sh I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what is this? Uh... I don't know what I'm looking at. Oh, this is just like this is uh, too much. Too much to read. Too much to read. What else is there? I wonder what was the um. Oh, this was interesting too. I thought it was. This was also another dumb lie that I'm pretty sure Amber Heard told. A 2014 Amber Heard letter to U.S. Department of Homeland Security complaining about fraudulent report. Foreign Savannah McMillan was illegally working with Ms. as Ms. Heard's assistant. Email, I'm Savannah Amber Heard's assistant. So um, there was this um, assistant that worked for Amber Heard when she was in London, I think. And then so she was spending time in the U.S. and somebody had reported her saying that she was working illegally in the U.S., I guess without like a like a work visa. And so when she re-entered the country, um, uh, is it called Border Patrol? Border Patrol took her aside and like had to interview her for like hours. And so she was uh, she was trying to get Amber Heard to write a letter saying that, oh, she's not working for Amber Heard, even though a lot of, I think like the assistant and some other people said that like she was working for Amber and Amber was paying her. And there was like a check too. Oh yeah, they like photocopy like a check that Amber Heard wrote to the assistant. Um, but Amber said that she didn't write this letter. I don't know why she would even say that, but she said she didn't write this letter. Um, her assistant did. And they were like, well, why did you sign it? And she was just like, well, you know, I just... I just, I just looked at it and it looked good and then I signed it afterwards. But um, I think what people said was, well, if, she, if, if this Savannah girl, the assistant wrote this letter, why would she misspell her name? <laughs> it was like a miscapitalization or something because her name is uh, Macmillan and she didn't capitalize the second M. So, and they're, they're like, yeah, like, why are you lying about this? You, you probably wrote this letter. So I don't know. It's just like small things like this where it's just like, ah, 
okay. Like, let's say you didn't lie, I guess. But then you'll grow into like more things that just seems like really small white lies. But yeah, I don't know. <sighs> Lord of the Wrongs? What is Lord of the Wrongs? <laughs> Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings is amazing. Then a Lord of the Rings or Star Wars? Okay, Star Wars, no. Lord of the Rings, amazing. Love Lord of the Rings. All right, yeah, so those are some of Adam Waldman's uh, tweets. Sorry about that, ready? I would instruct the witness not to answer that question on the grounds of attorney-client privilege and attorney work product. You can't answer that question without disclosing uh, communications between himself and his client, Mr. Depp. As you're aware, Ms. Bredehoff, the court has ruled that Mr. Depp has not waived attorney-client privilege and will not be waiving attorney-client privilege. So you're aware of that. So Mr. Chu, I'm not sure that you heard my question. I was actually asking him if he had any other type of representation relationship with Mr. Depp other than as an attorney client. I think he can answer that yes or no, but I would I would instruct the witness on behalf of Johnny Depp not to disclose any communications you've had with your client. No. So just so we're clear, since we had a little bit of record back and forth, um, the only way in which you represent Mr. Depp is as an attorney client representation, is that correct? I'm sorry, Mr. Waldman. I believe that's true. Okay. Um, and you are here today providing this deposition under a subpoena and then subsequent notice, correct? Yes. And when did you first become Mr. Depp's counsel? I think that it was around October 2016. And what is your role in this case as counsel for Mr. Depp? Objection. Sure. Uh, and I would instruct the witness not to answer that question. Okay, I'll follow the instruction. When did you first meet Mr. Depp as opposed to first start representing him? I first met him in October of 2016. How is it that you came to meet Mr. Depp? The general counsel that I referenced a moment ago asked me to go and uh, have a meeting with him, with Mr. Depp, and to talk about a financial problem that he was having. Did you enter into a written representation agreement with Mr. Depp when you began your representation? I would instruct the witness not to answer that question that calls for attorney-client privilege. Okay, I follow the instruction. Have you entered into more than one representation agreement with Mr. Depp during the course of your representation? Same instruction not to answer. He can't answer that without disclosing attorney-client communications and attorney work product. Mr. Waldman, when did you consider your attorney-client relationship with Mr. Depp to have begun? I believe it began the night I met him, actually. Sometime in October 2016? Yes, ma'am. Has the relation, has the attorney-client relationship between you and Mr. Depp been severed at any point between October 2016 and the present? Would instruct uh, the witness not to answer that question uh, on the grounds that you can't answer that question without disclosing attorney-client communications. Okay, I accept the instruction. As Mr. Depp's attorney, you have a pri you have provided him with advice. Is that fair to say? No shit. That's correct. <laughs> and you have charged Mr. Depp for your advice. As Mr. Depp's previous legal attorney, um, you, you gave him legal advice. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I would instruct the witness not uh, to answer that question. You can't answer that without disclosing attorney. Where are we going, uh, Elaine? Communications. All right, let me be patient with Elaine. In any event, is, Elaine's going somewhere. Uh, irrelevant. He's going somewhere. But I'm instructing him not to answer on the grounds of privilege. I accept the instruction. 
Yeah, what the fuck did Mr. he answer Walden, then? When you provide legal services in an attorney-client relationship, your understanding of that is that you provide advice and your client in turn compensates you in some manner. Would that be fair to say? Yes, as a general matter, that's that's how I understand an attorney-client relationship, yes. And has Mr. Depp paid you <coughs> advice? I would instruct, uh, I do instruct the witness not to answer on the grounds of attorney-client privilege. You can't answer that question without disclosing your communications with Mr. Depp. I accept the instruction. Well, let's go general again and see if maybe we can work at it from that perspective. So in, in your relationship with your clients, you provide advice and it's up to the client to determine whether to follow that advice. Would that be fair to say? As a general matter, I do agree with that statement, yes. All right. Uh, and by the same token, it would be up to the client to determine whether to reject your advice in whole or part, correct? You're still speaking in general. Correct. In general, yes. Okay. Now, did you did your relationship with Mr. Depp, and I'm talking about your attorney-client relationship, deviate from those general principles that in some way Mr. Depp is not permitted to follow or reject your advice? Would instruct the witness not to uh, answer the question based on attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Now, Mr. Depp has the right to terminate your representation at any time. Is that correct? But yes, I think it's true. Okay. I think Depp we need to let... Would be free to uh, terminate at any time. My apologies, Mr. Waldman. I didn't realize you were still talking. D did you finish? Yes, I did. Thank you. Now, has Mr. Depp terminated your representation of him at any time between October 2016 and the present? That's the same question that... Uh, I instructed Mr. Waldman not to answer before, just stated in a slightly different way, so I would instruct the witness not to answer that question. I accept the instruction. Now, oh, and Mr. Depp, as the client in your relationship, is in the position to make the final decision regardless of your advice. Would you agree? I, I would instruct the witness not to answer that question. I don't know that he, well, I know he can't answer that question without disclosing communications with Mr. Depp. So I instruct the witness not to answer. I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, if you were advising a client in an attorney-client relationship uh, and you were in settlement negotiations, would it be you or the client who has the ultimate decision-making ability? But to speculate about the question, yes, generally, the client would be responsible for deciding you know, the ultimate outcome of a settlement. Yes. Now, you met Mr. Depp after he and Amber Heard had split up. Is that correct? That's correct. And you met Mr. Depp after he and Amber Heard had reached a settlement in their divorce. Is that correct? That's my understanding. So you have no personal knowledge of anything that went on during their marriage. Is that fair to say? Well, it depends what you mean by personal knowledge. I wasn't there. If that's what you mean. Correct. Okay. You never witnessed any interaction between Mr. Depp and Amber Heard prior to October 2016. Is that correct? That's correct. So Amber Heard, when she was talking towards the end of her testimony, she talked about, because uh, you know Amber Heard's countersuing for a hundred fucking million dollars. I don't know how she came up with the money, but, um, or the amount. But she's countersuing for a hundred million dollars and she basically said that Adam Waldman said a lot of def... Adam Waldman said her sexual abuse was a hoax. Adam Waldman said that her and her friends created this elaborate hoax against Johnny Depp. And that made her very um, stressed out, I think is what she said. And uh, I guess she was alluding to the fact that he was doing on behalf of Johnny Depp. So I, I guess that's why they have Adam Waldman on here. But Adam Waldman was his lawyer. So there's gonna be a lot of things that he can't say. <laughs> um, that's why I guess I, uh, I, I don't know, what's her name again, Elaine? That's why Elaine was like, oh, you know, aside from being his lawyer, did you serve to Johnny Depp as any other capacity? Um, but yeah, if you, dude, it's crazy. Adam Waldman, 
<laughs> exposed the shit out of Amber on his Twitter. Holy shit. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's I'm not really quite sure. The jury's probably just really confused why he's here. And you have no personal knowledge of any conduct by either of them against the other prior to October 2016. Is that correct? Again, if you're asking me, do I have any knowledge of their conduct? I get access I have to the evidence and he was there for the trial. Think, maybe you're asking me, did I witness conduct? I'm asking <laughs> personal knowledge, which would mean you would have had to have witnessed it. If you're asking whether I've witnessed it, the answer is no. No, your initial knowledge of the relationship between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard was based on your interviews with Mr. Depp. Would that be fair to say? I, I would instruct the witness not to answer that question because he can't even answer yes or no without disclosing the substance of communications with his client, Mr. Depp. I accept the instruction. Once you came into Mr. Depp's life and became his counsel, Mr. Depp filed with your assistance a number of lawsuits. Would you agree? Yes. Did Mr. Depp terminate Tracy Jacobs as his agent before or after you became Mr. Depp's counsel? Mr. Waldman, I would instruct you not to answer that question if doing so would require you to disclose any communications you had with Mr. Depp. It would. How long had Tracy Jacobs been Mr. Depp's agent at the time Mr. Depp terminated Tracy Jacobs? And, and again, Adam, same instruction to the extent that, uh, that answering the question requires you to disclose communications that you had with Mr. Depp I would instruct you not to answer the question. It would. Was it Mr. Depp's decision to terminate Tracy Jacobs? Again, I would instruct you not to answer that question because that could only have come from Mr. Depp in the communication with you. I accept the instruction. After you began representing Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against Joel Mandel, Mr. Depp's former business manager, correct? That's correct. And you represented Mr. Depp in that lawsuit against Joel Mandel and his company, did you not? I did. I guess their angle here is that Johnny Depp used his lawyer, Adam Waldman, to defame Amber on Twitter, leak things, and it made Amber's life hell because to her, um, all of her allegations were real. I think that's what she's trying to prove. And that Adam Waldman did more than work as Johnny Depp's lawyer. He did like his dirty work for him, I, I guess. I don't, I don't know. That's, that's my assumption, I guess. Who's a lawyer? <laughs> but it was Mr. Depp's decision on whether to file the lawsuit against Mr. Mandel and his company. Would you agree? I would instruct the, the witness not to answer that question because it would require uh, communication dis disclosure of communications between Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman as to who was advising who as to filing the case against TMG and the Mandel brothers. So I would instruct you not to answer that. I accept the instruction. Did Mr. Depp have the ultimate decision making ability with respect to the lawsuit against Mr. Mandel and his company? And again, I would instruct you not to answer to the extent it requires you to disclose attorney uh, client communication. It would. After you began representing Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against Jake Bloom, Mr. Depp's former attorney, correct? That's correct. And you represented Mr. Depp in that lawsuit against Jake Bloom and his law firm, did you not? I did. But it was Mr. Depp's decision on whether to file the lawsuit against Mr. Bloom and his law firm. Is that correct? Again, I would instruct yeah, I like, the witness not to that. answer to the extent it requires him to disclose attorney you know, It's funny, Elaine had a bright red lipstick when she entered the courtroom. After break, it's gone. <laughs> I think she ate it. And 
Mr. Depp, though, was the ultimate decision maker in connection with any decisions made in the litigation against Mr. Bloom and his law firm. Would you agree? Same instruction not to answer. It's basically I didn't the watch same uh, question gussied up a bit. So same instruction not to answer. I accept the instruction. After you began representing Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against the Sun newspaper and its editor-in-chief, Dan Wooten, correct? Correct. And for purposes of this deposition, deposition, I may refer to the lawsuit against the Sun and its editor, Dan Wooten, as the UK lawsuit or the UK litigation. Will you understand those references to mean this? I will. What was your role in the UK litigation? <laughs> I would instruct the witness not Chris. to answer that question because it necessarily requires him or would require him to disclose his communications with his client, Johnny Depp. I'm surprised it hasn't said Mr. Debt yet. It would. <laughs> you represented DVD. Mr. Depp throughout the UK litigation, correct? Again, I would, I would. And Mr. Depp alleged in the UK litigation that the son and Dan Wooten had committed libel by accusing Mr. Depp of being a, quote, wife beater, end of quote, and committing de domestic violence against Amber Heard, correct? That's true. It was Mr. Depp's decision on whether to bring the UK lawsuit against the son and Dan Wooten, correct? And again, I would instruct the witness not to answer any any. Um, I would instruct him not to answer because it perforce would require him to disclose attorney-client communications. Hi, Mr. Drip, did you see that? that? Went into filing that particular lawsuit. I accept the instruction. After you began representing Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp filed suit against Amber Heard, his former wife, correct? That's correct. And you represented Mr. Depp in the lawsuit against Amber Heard from March 1, 2019, up until October of 2020. Is that correct? Yes. And it was Mr. Depp's decision on whether to file the lawsuit against Amber Heard. Is that correct? Would instruct the witness not to answer that question based on attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. And Mr. Depp is Good alleging God. In this lawsuit that Amber Heard defamed him by suggesting that he had committed domestic abuse again. It was like, I thought she was going to ask some real questions, but you know what? It's not going to get real. Let me take off my glasses. Correct? Yes. As part of your representation of Mr. Depp, you contacted potential witnesses. Is that correct? Again, I, I would. That is attorney work product. And did it say Mr. Depp? Wait, did I miss that? Uh, in Virginia. So once that Mr. Drip and Mr. Depp, did so I miss it? So I would object it? on that basis, but you can answer that question yes or no. Yes. You also spoke with the press on Mr. Depp's behalf, did you not? And I would instruct the witness not to answer to the extent that it requires um, disclosure of any communications between yourself and Mr. Depp. It would. And therefore, and therefore, I accept the instruction. <laughs> How frequently did you communicate with the press on Mr. Depp's behalf? I would instruct the witness not to answer that question because um, impossible to do so without disclosing attorney client privilege. I accept the instruction. Why did you communicate with the press? Same instruction not to answer on the same grounds. I accept the instruction. What were you hoping to gain? Same instruction not to answer the question. I accept Based. the instruction. You remain Mr. Depp's primary counsel for all of his affairs. Isn't that correct? I, I, I'm going to instruct the witness not to answer that because I don't think you can answer that without disclosing your communications with Mr. Depp. And we have to be consistent. <laughs> That, that's true, and I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as exhibit number three. Did there come a time in 2000... Mm, I just watched Good Will Hunting recently. I love that movie. 2018 that you contacted Rolling Stone 
about writing an article about Mr. Dell. And to the extent that you cannot answer it without disclosing communications with Mr. Depp, I would instruct you not to answer. I think it would implicate discussions with Mr. Depp, so I accept your instruction. The author of this article, which was published on June 21, 2018, is Stephen Roderick. Were you present when Mr. Roderick interviewed Mr. Depp? Hi, Maru. You may answer that question, yes or no. It's not yes or no. I was there for some of it. Okay. Was the Rolling Stone... I don't think the jury has any idea what the fuck is going on right now. They're probably just like... <laughs> interview before or after Mr. Depp filed suit against the son and Dan Wooten? I'm not sure. Do you recall whether the publication of this Rolling Stone article was before or after Mr. Depp filed the lawsuit against the son and Dan Wooten? I don't. I'm going to ask you to take a look at page 10 and it says on page no, 10, does it not. was Adam Waldman who first contacted Rolling Stone about writing a story about the injustice of being, injustice being done to Depp's reputation and bottom line. You see that? He does not. Well, before you go there, Mr. Waldman, I asked you a question. I just read that and said, do you see that? Would that, can you answer that question? I, I thought I answered yes. They're both yes, white. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, and is that an accurate statement? No. What is inaccurate about it? It says it was Adam Waldman who first contacted Rolling Stone. That's incorrect. From a certain angle, I could see. What is correct? What is correct is that I was not the first to contact Rolling Stone. Who first contacted Rolling Stone? Who baked those muffins today? Mr. Depp. I'm going to ask the question, notwithstanding, why did Mr. Depp contact Rolling Stone? I would instruct you not to answer that question. I accept the instruction. Did Mr. Depp authorize you to have communications with the Rolling Stone to set up this interview? Instruct you not to answer that question on the grounds of attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Did you assist Mr. Depp with publicity uh, on Mr. Depp's behalf? I would instruct I would instruct you not to answer on the grounds of the I can't read the article because I'm not subscribed. This is the Rolling Stone article that they're talking about. The trouble with Johnny Depp, multi-million dollar lawsuits, has a booze and hash, a marriage gone very wrong, a lifestyle he can't afford, inside the trials of Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp isn't here yet, yet his presence all around the 10,500 10, square foot rented mansion at 16 Bush. Blah, 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 blah. Um, something about personal chef making him, ooh, Peking duck. Damn, that sounds good. Stoogy, 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 stoogy sized joint left in a sink in the guest bathroom. He's here in the never ending reservoir of wine that is poured into goblets. And he's here in a half done painting upstairs that features a burning black house. A child Johnny, an angry woman who resembles his mother Betty Sue. What what is this um what is this article about? Well, I, I guess it's about this, but like I don't get it. Why do we care about this article? Attorney client communication. I accept the instruction. In your view, does assisting Mr. Depp with publicity constitute legal work? Um uh, the witness has already testified he had one engagement for Mr. Depp, and that was a legal engagement. So I'm going to instruct him not to answer any questions about his communications with Mr. Depp. Wait, what? I accept the instruction. In participating in the interview with the Rolling Stones... Were was that when he would leak things to the press? Is that what he meant by illegal engagement? Are you speaking on Mr. Depp's behalf? And I, I'm going to instruct not to answer because, again, I don't think you can answer that question without disclosing your communications uh, with Mr. Depp about authority. So I'm instructing you not to answer the question. 
It was Mr. Depp's choice whether you said anything to the press relating to Mr. Depp. Would you agree? Instruct, no, I instruct the witness not to answer. I accept um, Mr. Waldman, you reached out to a number of other publications to For speak South Park. on Mr. Depp's behalf. Do you recall? Again, I would instruct not to answer to the extent. Oh, it was a legal engagement. I thought it said illegal. I was like, wait, tell me more. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. I have bad hearing. <laughs> and it requires you to disclose communications that you had with Mr. Depp. It would, and I accept the instruction. How many publications did you communicate with on behalf of Mr. Depp? Same instruction not to answer based on attorney client privilege and attorney work product. I accept the instruction. <clears throat> How many publications did you reach out to on Mr. Depp's behalf relating to the UK litigation? Same instruction not to answer on the same grounds. I accept the instruction. How many publications did you reach out to on Mr. Depp's behalf relating to this litigation? Same instruction on the same grounds. I accept the instruction. How many publications did you reach out to concerning <laughs> allegations that Mr. Depp had abused Amber Heard? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Mr. Weldman, you had a Twitter account, did you not? <laughs> Banned. I did. Get it back. Where get it back. Get it back. Begin that Twitter account. I'm not sure of the date. We're gonna go through the tweets. Approximately when? I'm not even sure of the year. During lunch break. Is it prior to 2005, <clears throat> 2010, 2015? Do you want me to speculate? I, I want you to give me your best estimate. Okay. It's the same I'm, thing. I'm really Speculating sure and year. best estimate. I, I couldn't put a specific date on it. Do you recall? If you want to give me ranges, I could try. Now he's got a hot toddy in there. Do you recall how many years <laughs> you had the Twitter account? Not precisely, no. Was it more than a year? I think so. Was it more than three years? I don't. We're not think supposed so. to speculate. No. But I guess best guess and speculate is different. You had your Twitter account suspended, correct? Yes, that's true. My Twitter account was suspended. Do you recall when that was? Smiling. <laughs> Not with specificity, no. You try to get his account why? back, but they were like, no. Well, I wrote several letters to Twitter to ask why I was suspended for life from their platform. And the response that I received was uh, multiple violations of their policy. So I asked, could they name one example of those multiple violations? And they responded by saying, now they were appealing without my asking them to do so, my suspension. And that's when they sent me another note that I was suspended for life. So just so the record's clear, so you have been suspended for life by Twitter? It's just like Twitch. <laughs> yes. Okay. Do you have a Twitter account now. He does. No. He does. Do you still communicate with the press relating to Mr. Depp? And I would instruct the witness not to answer the question to the extent that it requires you to disclose communications between you and Johnny. It would, so I accept the instruction. Do you still communicate with the press on Mr. Depp's behalf? Same instruction. Uh, no, same Ben crossing Amber wouldn't look good because I Amber's saying she's an abuse victim. So a Has man Mr. doing Depp it would look kind of bad, I guess. Not to speak to the press. Makes sense. Same instruction, same grounds. That and then they also mentioned that the jury is mostly made of young men. And so to see like two women duke it out <laughs> would be more interesting. <laughs> On its face, if it would require Mr. Depp, Mr. Waldman to disclose his communications she with Mr. Well. Depp, which he will not do. It, it would, and I accept the instruction. Would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak to the press? I will instruct the witness not to answer because it's an end around the attorney-client privilege. Clever, but I'm going to instruct the witness not, <laughs> witness not to answer. He said Elaine was clever. I accept the instruction. Clever, Has but Mr. no bitch. Has Mr. Depp ever asked you not to speak to the press about issues involving he and Amber Heard? 
would instruct the witness not to answer the question on attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you not to speak with the press about issues involving he and Amber Heard? Well, and I will instruct not to answer on the grounds of attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Has Mr. Depp ever asked you to correct or retract any statements you made to the press relating to Mr. Depp or Mr. Heard or Amber Heard? Would instruct the witness not to answer on the grounds of attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Would you have followed Mr. Depp's direction if he had asked you to correct or retract any statements you made to the press relating to Mr. Depp or Amber Heard? Same instruction, same grounds. And I accept the instruction. Have you ever asked the press to correct or retract any statements you have made to the press relating to Mr. Depp or Amber Heard? I want to make sure I understand the instruction. He's well moisturized. You instruct not to answer in the event it implicates privileged conversations with Mr. Depp? Yeah, I think I'm going to instruct not to answer. Okay, thank you. I understand. I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as exhibit number four. I think I'm going to try to blow it up just a touch. It looks kind of hard to read. I don't know if the jury is even catching on what's going on. And it's a, it's an article from July 3, 2020. The Mail Online, this is Daily Mail Online. Do you see that? I do. No, no, actually, if I'm just going to go to page eight, I'm going to ask you to take a look at the following. It says, Adam Waldman, Depp's lawyer, said afterwards, quote, Amber Heard and her friends in the media use fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and a shield, depending on their needs. They have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts, quote facts, end of quote, as the sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? I do. Did you make that statement? I believe I did. Did you make that statement on behalf of Mr. Depp? Instruct the witness not to answer that question on attorney-client privilege grounds. I accept the instruction. Elaine looks unamused. I don't think this video deposition goes the way that they wanted it to. I don't know. They look like they're like, you know how like sometimes you got something good coming up and you're just like anticipating, you're like excited. Why did you? Oh, hello. You representing Mr. Depp at the time you made this statement. And in any event, I'm going to instruct the witness not to answer that question on attorney-client privilege grounds. I apologize. I actually didn't hear the question. I can agree with the instruction, but I probably. Really? Young Asian man? Fair enough. Amy, could you read that back, please? Thank you. One moment. I would instruct the witness not to answer. Did you discuss this statement with Mr. Depp before making the statement? On the same grounds. Yeah, I accept the instruction. Did you discuss the statement with Mr. Depp after making the statement? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Was Mr. Depp aware either before or after that you were making this statement? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Did you make this statement with Mr. Depp's authorization or agreement? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Was Mr. Depp aware that you were speaking with the press? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. Did Mr. Depp ever ask you to retract or correct this statement? Same instruction, same grounds. I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp had asked you to retract or correct this statement, would you have retracted or corrected it? Same instruction, same. Mr. Depp had told you that the statement was not correct. Would you have corrected or retracted it? Same instruction, same grounds. 
I accept the instruction. Did you rely upon any statements or evidence from Mr. Depp in making this statement? Same instruction, same. And if you could bring up exhibit number five. Mr. Waldman, I'm going to be asking you a question about a specific statement in this one. If you would like to read the article first, you are certainly at liberty to, and you can take control now and do. This is, I guess, I didn't uh, set the stage here. This was the Daily Mail published on July. Direct your attention to page nine. Depp's lawyer, Adam Waldman, said the various discrepancies prove that nothing heard and her friend said about the events of May 21, 2016 could be considered credible. Do you see that? Should hear say. Then I'm going to direct your attention, Mr. Waldman, to the next statement. Quote, quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops, but the first attempt didn't do the trick. The officers came to the penthouse. Most people hate Daily Mail. What about the sun? And left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed the place up got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and a publicist, and then placed a second call to 911. Do you see that statement? Oh, this guy made a video about this, about the 911 call. Uh, we could watch it together. It's pretty interesting. I do. Did you make those statements? There are two parts to what you've shown me. The first part didn't have quotation marks around it. And, and I'm not asking about that. I, okay. I'm sorry. Where it said nothing could be considered credible. That's not quoting me. The right. part with the quote marks, I believe I said that, yes. So starting from quite simply through nine one one, you stated all that. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Did you make this these statements on mr depp's behalf instruct the witness not to uh answer on the grounds of attorney client privilege i accept the instruction ah got Why it jason did you make these statements same instruction same reason i accept the instruction rupert murdoch right same thing what were you trying to convey to the press in making these statements same instruction same reason <clears throat> i accept the instruction did you discuss this statement with Mr. Depp before making these statements? Same instruction, same reason. I accept the instruction. In the UK trial, the only people that were witnesses for Amber Heard was her friends. So I think she knew that she had to get more people because Johnny Depp has uh, his sister, his best friend, uh, his bodyguards, right? But people who weren't like, like directly under his payroll, aside from like the, I mean, the nurses and doctors, they're getting paid by him, but they're still nurses and doctors, you know? Um, Johnny Depp had like his business manager, Johnny Depp had uh, like police officers. So Johnny Depp had like a bunch of different people that were testifying on his behalf, but then Amber only had friends. So I think at this point, Amber, <laughs> Amber was just trying to scrape the bottom of the fucking barrel, you know, get anything she can. Did you discuss these statements with Mr. Depp following making these statements? Same instruction, same rationale. Yes, I accept the instruction. Was Mr. Depp aware either before or after that you were making these statements? Same instruction, same reason. I accept the instruction. Did you make these statements with Mr. Depp's authorization or agreement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Was Mr. Depp aware you were speaking with the press? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did Mr. Depp ever ask you to retract or correct these statements? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp had asked you to retract or correct these statements, would you have retracted or corrected them? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp had told you these statements were not correct, would you have corrected or retracted them? Same instruction, same basis. Accept the instruction. Did you rely upon any statements or evidence from Mr. Depp in making these statements? Same instruction, same basis. Accept the instruction. 
Mr. Waldman, I'm going to ask you to take a look at exhibit number six. This was another Daily Mail online, July 3, 2020. Oh, my stomach kind of hurts. And if you would like to go ahead and read the article, this would be a good time to do it. Thank you. Mr. Waldman, we were looking at... Hello? Oh, is that me? My bad. What is the sound? I'm so sorry. I was pulling up Johnny Depp's pet house. Would like 2020. And if you uh, would like to go ahead and, and uh, read the article, this would oh, be Oh, hi, Michael. I've hung out with Cook a couple Thank times. You. Mr. Waldman, we were looking at Waldman exhibit number six. And it, it's Where the is he now? In Singapore or some July, shit? Malaysia? Just Korea? Lost her there. But uh, July 3rd, 2020. And you were going to scroll through it, and I think we had some technical difficulties, so we took a break. Have you had an opportunity to review it, or do you need to now? Uh, no, um, Mr. Bredoff, I, 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 I just I just saw the screen for the first time, so may I read it now? Absolutely. I'm going to ask you to turn to what is the 11th page, the last page you just finished reading, and I'm going to direct your attention to some specific words Korea. that are attributed to you. Do you see that it says Depp's attorney Adam Waldman said? Thank you. Okay. Do you see Depp's attorney Adam Waldman said? Do you see that there, Mr. Waldman? I do. Okay. And then I'm going to direct your attention to specifically the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp. Do you see that? I do. Did you speak the words, quote, the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp? I'm, I'm not sure. It, it appears as I look at this that there are quote marks around the statement, and that suggests that I did. I don't remember saying these particular words, but it appears so. Do you have any reason to believe that you did not say the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Ms. Johnny Depp? No, I have no reason to, no reason to doubt that. What was, were you representing Mr. Depp at the time you made this statement? I'm going to refer to it as a statement. I'm taking specific words, Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp. But were you representing Mr. Depp at the time you made the statement that included Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp? Instruct the witness not oh, Rachel, to answer based on attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. Why did you make this statement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. What were you trying to convey to the press in making this statement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did you make this statement on Mr. Depp's behalf? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did you discuss this statement with Mr. Depp before making the statement? Same. Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did you discuss this statement with Mr. Depp following making the statement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Was Mr. Depp aware either before or after that you were making this statement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did you make this statement with Mr. Depp's authorization or agreement? Same instruction, same basis. I'll be right back. I'll listen to some iPad. I got to use back. Accept the point. instruction. Was Mr. Depp aware you were speaking with the press? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Did Mr. Depp ever ask you to retract or correct this statement? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. If Mr. Depp had asked you to retract or correct the statement, would you have done so? Same instruction, same basis. I accept the instruction. Mr. Waldman, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as deposition exhibit number 11. And if you want to take a moment, I'm going to try to make it. Uh, Mr. Waldman, I'm just going to ask you, it's, it's just kind of two and a half pages. Go ahead and take the moment to uh, review it. And then I'll uh, ask you some questions. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay, thank you. I've read it. Okay. So directing your attention to exhibit number 11. So uh, I'll, because there's a number of these, so maybe we can just clear it up right from the start. So we have conversations. You look at the top, conversation, six messages, three parties over 209 minutes. And it has this first one, it has a date and a time, and it has a telephone number. Do you see that? I do. Okay. And then it has some email messages, or text messages. It looks like it starts with Keith Bishop. Do you know who Keith Bishop is? I do. And who is he? Keith Bishop is a, a publicist who lives in London. And for what uh, what uh, publication? Oh no, he's a he's a he's a he's a publicist. He's an advisor on media. I see. Did you at any time did you or um, Mr. Depp ever employ Keith Bishop? in any kind of uh, public relations role. Mr. Waldman, I would instruct you not to answer any, um, I would instruct you not to answer the question to the extent that it would require you to disclose any communications you had with with Johnny, either receiving or, or giving. I would not be able to answer without doing so. So I, I accept the instruction. Okay, and then Mr. Bishop says, and this is on 128-2020, Adam, I can confirm a meeting with the mail online for Monday, 17 February at 10 a.m. You see that? I do. So did you in fact have a meeting with the, the mail online on 17 February? I, I couldn't say sitting here now definitively that we met on Monday, the 17th of February, no, but uh, I see this and it, it wouldn't surprise me if we had. And was Mr. Depp with you when you had the meeting? I believe Mr. Depp was with me when we had this meeting. And you were representing Mr. Depp at the time, correct? I, I would instruct the witness not to answer that question um, based on attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. When did you obtain the audio tape that you're referencing in this text message? And I would instruct you not to answer the question to the extent it would require you to disclose any communications you had with Mr. Depp, your client. It, it would, and so I won't be able to answer the question. What tape did you provide to the mail online, the Daily Mail? In this, are you asking, forgive me, in this instance relating to this text? Yes. Uh, my recollection is that I gave a pair of audio tapes actually to them. Whether that occurred sequentially or at the same time, I don't remember, but I provided them two tapes. What training have you had in domestic violence? None. <clears throat> have you ever represented any clients who have either been accused of domestic violence or or had domestic violence committed on them other than Mr. Depp? No. And of course, you hadn't you never saw any, as we would say, element or elements of things that Ms. Hurd claimed, right? I never saw any element or elements of things she claimed. Um, do you mean, did I ever see evidence with my own eyes that something she was saying was false? Yes. Yes, to some extent I have seen evidence of things that show her statements to be false. Before we get there, as best you can recall today, who are the eyewitnesses that you, um, among the 29 or so that you referred to in the text of Christian Carino, that 
you believe disprove Ms. Heard's claims of abuse by Johnny Depp? Okay, good. Um, it's, it's, it's also probably easier to answer by taking a, a particular incident rather than just thinking of, of names of people. So um, maybe this is a good illustration that, that, that is a helpful answer. Um, on May 21st, 2016, and I, I always view this as one of her central claims. It was the one she put on the cover of People magazine. Uh, it's the one she led with when she went to get her temporary restraining order. Um, the phone to the face incident on May 21st, 2016. That's her claim and that she was beaten, further beaten by some appendage of Mr. Depp in the face uh, and her hair was pulled. Um, and she showed up on the 27th in court with a lot of uh, bruises on her face. So there are two police officers, one domestic violence trained female police officer who've testified over and over and over that there was no damage to the uh, penthouse, which Ms. Heard uh, claimed was destroyed. That's a direct quote, destroyed. Um, there, uh, there are, that I can think of, nine other witnesses, um, the majority of whom uh, are either neutral or actually well, Ms. Heard's own witnesses who have testified in various forms, um, various times, that uh, there were no injuries to her face whatsoever between the 21st uh, and the 27th when suddenly there were bruises. Um, Who are those nine? Let's see. Um, Laura Divinier, um, um, Melanie and Glacy, um, Amber's own uh, uh, primary makeup artist. Um, Laura Divinier was Ms. Hurd's assistant and decorator uh, and now works for Elon Musk. Um, Hilda Vargas, um, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's at the time housekeeper. Um, Samantha McMillan, who was Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp's uh, stylist, and a good friend of Ms. Hurd. Hi. <laughs> um, Isaac Baruch, uh, Ms. Hurd's and Mr. Depp's friend, close friend, and uh, Ms. Hurd's neighbor in the penthouses. Okay, uh, so continuing on, uh, the, the witnesses, a list of some witnesses to the 21st, to her claims of, of, of violence and damage to the apartment. Um, um, hey, Trinity updated. Esparza, who was the head of the concierge desk at the Eastern Columbia building um, and a friend of Ms. Hurd's also. Uh, Cornelius Harrell, uh, who I think also worked for the concierge desk or in any event worked for the Eastern Columbia building and met with Ms. Hurd on the 22nd uh, of May, uh, which meeting was captured on CCTV also. Um, uh, Alejandro Romero, who I believe is head of security at the Eastern Columbia building, Amber Heard made the mistake of saying that she didn't really get close to the concierge team, so how would they have seen the bruise on her face? But there was a CCTV footage of her talking to at least one of them face to face, and they were getting the packages together. <laughs> and then later on, she's like, "Well, I had on makeup, so they couldn't see it anyway." Um, and I think Brandon Patterson also testified about the uh, absence of of bruises. And I should, I should even distinguish, because we're talking about the notion of a hoax, I should distinguish these people uh, specifically have given testimony that she was, Ms. Heard was uninjured between the 21st uh, of May uh, up into perhaps the 25th or 26th of May. And then of course she appeared bruised again on the 27th. Some of them have testified that even after the 27th, they were with her and she appeared uh, and that she appeared bruised. But during that period between the 21st and the 27th, I, I'm not sure if I've listed nine plus the two police officers, um, but I think that's that's an illustration of what I was referring to um, when I, when I, in the question you uh, uh, asked me about. Can you please pull up um, a document labeled ARW 660, please? Sorry, but you, do believe that the pictures and videos Marilyn Manson sent you helped disprove Ms. Hurd's allegations, correct? 
as to that as to that incident uh thanksgiving perhaps 2013 i think those i think those videos uh and photographs yes demolished your claim have you communicated Damn. with other social media um users about this case i think the Marilyn manson video is talking about the thanksgiving thing so amber heard said that uh during thanksgiving uh, Johnny Depp threw wine at her. It smashed on the wall on some artwork, I guess. And that um, I think she said that like he like slapped her around or something. Um, but then Marilyn Manson produced a video of them spending Thanksgiving together. And I believe Amber said, well, actually, we went upstairs to fight. And that's when the wine thing happened. It was until after all the guests left that they got into a physical fight. So I th I'm pretty sure she changed her story when Marilyn when Marilyn Manson gave that uh, little video of like them like all spending Thanksgiving together and everyone's like laughing and like smiling. Pretty sure Other that's what we're talking about. Public messaging platforms. Let me let me ask that differently. Have you communicated privately with other social media users about this case? Um, other social media, I want to make sure I'm precise, other social media users? Yes. Uh, that would, that would, that group would include almost everybody on earth. <laughs> Have you provided information about this case to other social media personalities who then post that information? Um, I've provided information episodically to what I would what I would call internet journalists, and I'll define that as journalists who are not affiliated with. You mentioned, I think, NBC a moment ago, or, or a you know a, a mainstream media outlet. Have you communicated with um, a social media user who goes by the name that umbrella guy? Um, I've had several phone calls with a. Oh, that umbrella guy. That name sounds familiar. I I think uh, he has a YouTube channel. I think that's how I found him. With the person who goes by the name, that umbrella guy, don't actually know his real name. Um, have you communicated with him other than through phone calls? Um, I don't remember doing so, no. Um, I don't I didn't really hear anything about Marilyn Manson's case. My brother told me about it in passing, like a couple days ago, I think. What are other... Well, let me ask you this. D, have you communicated in a similar fashion with someone on social media who goes by the name That Brian Fella? Yes. Oh, That Brian Fella. That's the guy um does pretty good YouTube videos uh, covering this. And he does, like, animations and stuff. Um, what about someone who goes by the name The Real Laura B? Yes. And have you communicated to those individuals listed um, evidence that you believe suggests that Miss Hurd's allegations are hoaxes. Oh, wait, no, this is this is Ben Roddenboard. It's not Ben Chu. Sorry, I fucked up, guys. This is the <laughs> wrong voice. Um, I would say I communicate with the internet journalists because we put them in a category calling them that. I, I've done that. Exactly the same way I would communicate with mainstream media um if they have questions about evidence or the facts i'll you know i'll i'll uh i'll inform them and have you in when you communicate with them do you do so you testified some by phone correct yes do you do so by text or messenger platform largely i think by phone but if i if i communicated in writing, it would be probably by signal. Can you please pull up uh, the exhibits um, ALH 17001 to two, please? Turn on the screen, exhibit 24. No, my question, well, my first question is, um, is that in that box where it says first on the record statement, um, from me regarding the body cam to RTL, Adam Waldman, Johnny Depp's attorney, is that um, 
is that a statement that you made to um, a German media outlet called RTL? Yes. And in that statement, you say that LAPD have now opened up a criminal investigation into perjury of Ms. Hearn, correct? Yes. Did you, um, did, you, did you make a correction to RTL when you learned that the LAPD wasn't in fact investigating uh, Ms. Hearn for perjury? Well, the way you've characterized it is not exactly what I would agree with. The LAPD told me that they were uh, investigating the uh, the perjury claim at that time. Then sequentially came the statement. Then came notification from the LAPD that it was actually the LA Sheriff's Department that was investigating it, and that was the last I heard about it. And who notified you from the LAPD that it was allegedly the Sheriff's Department who was investigating it? The same uh, the same desk officer at Fodilla. And when I say is the desk officer, I, I don't know if that's not necessarily the job title. How did you find his, um, do you have his contact information? Uh, I don't think I do. I don't know, but I don't, well, I, I'm not sure. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I had asked you this. Um, how did you come into contact with this desk officer? I brought a binder of information um, <laughs> including the um, statements that had been made um, and the evidence showing that those statements were false. In your view. So you, you took a binder to the LAPD and spoke to this desk officer? Correct. And was that the only time that you spoke to this person? The two times. Were they both in person? Oh, maybe it's three, it's two or three times. No, um, no, two times we're on the phone. Was the first meeting in person when you brought this binder? No, the first was on the telephone. So the, the investigation was opened up at your request <laughs> after you brought this binder to the desk officer? Is that no, right? I didn't ask him. I didn't ask him to open an investigation. I filed a claim uh, with the LAPD um, regarding these perjurious statements that Ms. Hurd and her best friend Rocky Pennington had made uh, to a court. Was that claim that you filed in writing? Yes. Do you know whether that claim was produced as part of this, your document production in this case? Because I certainly haven't seen it. I don't know that I ever received a copy of it. It was filed in writing with the LAPD. Um, but I don't, I don't recall that I ever received a copy of it. Did you draft it? No. Look at Amber sitting there. So what was, you were talking to the desk officer and he was oh, taking wow. down notes and that, is that the writing you're referring to? Yes. Did you ever see this alleged written claim? Yes. Did you sign it? I don't recall if I did. Did you ever speak to anyone other than your client about this alleged perjury investigation? other than your client and the desk officer? Well, I think this quote that you've, that you've shown me to the media would, would constitute speaking about it. Did you ever hear anything more about <laughs> this perjury investigation um, to the extent it existed um, from anyone, any other third party who claimed that they had spoken to anyone in LAPD or the LA Sheriff's Office? No, I don't think so. Mr. Waldman, uh, do you have a professional license? All right, now it's Ben Chu. All right, Mr. Roddenborn is done. I think Mr. Roddenborn should just take over. I think he's been doing better than Elaine, but I think these are mostly videos, right? So. <laughs> I do. Do you have your own law firm? I do. What is the name of your law firm? Endeavor Law Firm. When was Endeavor Law Firm formed? All right, this is Ben um, Chu now. I think it was in 2005. 
And who was it who formed uh, your law firm? Uh, it was I who did it. And who owns your law firm? I do. What is your title at the Endeavor Law Firm? Uh, managing member, I believe. And it's, it's none of our business who your clients are, but does the Endeavor Law Firm have other clients other than Mr. Depp? Yes. <laughs> does Johnny Depp issue you a Form W-2? I don't think so, no. Do you receive legal training from Johnny Depp or any of your other clients? I suppose the practice of law in general is legal training, but if I understand your question correctly, no. Fair, fair point. Uh, have you ever listed Johnny Depp as your employer on any filings with the IRS? No. But you offer legal services to clients, correct? Yes. All right, I'll say, do you offer legal services Elaine? to uh, the general public? Probably not to the general public, but I offer legal services. I think that's your question. All right. Yes. S A N.